about Jesus teaches us how to pray. Well, right. okay. One of the great privileges that we Christians have is our constant access to God through prayer. Praying to God was something that Jesus took very seriously and that he did often. The gospel showed Jesus engaged in prayer time and time again. Of all people, Jesus, the Son of God, the physical embodiment of the divine, the sinless one, the miracle worker, mm -hmm. the healer, even the one who raised the dead prayed to his heavenly Father. Well. In Luke 3, verses 21 through 22, Jesus prayed at his baptism. In Luke 6 and 12, he prayed before choosing his 12 disciples. Yeah. In Mark chapter 7, he prayed while healing a man who was deaf and mute. Yeah. In Matthew 19, Jesus prayed while laying hands on little children. In Luke 22, he prayed that Peter's faith would not fail him. In Matthew 26, he prayed at the Lord's Supper. In John 17, Jesus prayed in Gethsemane for himself, for his disciples, and all believers. In Mark 6, 41, Jesus prayed over the little boy's lunch before he multiplied two fish and five loaves of bread and fed more than 5,000 people. In John 11, 41 through 42, Jesus prayed at the grave of of his friend Lazarus. Lazarus was resurrected from the grave. Jesus prayed when he was on the cross at Calvary. Oh, yeah. Prayer was an integral part of Jesus' life. Jesus' disciples were often with him when he prayed, but they had just as often seen him go away from them and pray in solitude. Sometimes they could see Jesus praying, but were not close enough to hear him. Mm -hmm. In Matthew 14 and 23, the scripture says, And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Mm -hmm. When evening came, he was there alone. In Luke 5, 16, the scripture says, But he would withdraw to a desolate place mm -hmm. and pray. Right. Mark 1 35 says, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Yes, yes, yes. Mark 6 46 says, And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. Yes. Right. Luke 6 and 12 tells us, In these days he went out of the mountain to pray, and all night he continued prayer to God. Matthew 26 and 44 says, So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus often prayed alone with yeah. God. Yeah. Just prior to our text in Matthew 6, Jesus tells the disciples that in contrast to those who pray aloud in public places to be seen and heard by others, they should go and pray in private. Mm -hmm. They needed no spectators, no admirers, no audiences when they prayed. <clears throat> to that, Jesus' disciples requested that he teach them how to pray. Yes. They knew that praying was important, but they needed to know more about how to pray. Teach them how to do what they've seen and heard him do. Matthew and Luke document the words of Jesus as he gives the disciples a blueprint, a pattern, a model for praying, which we know as the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. This prayer is a prototype for how to pray. It is a lesson outline on how to pray. 
If the disciples follow this example for praying, they will be successful at praying. They don't have to repeat the words that Jesus used, but follow his formula. It's brief but comprehensive. In it are seven specific petitions which cover everything that Jesus' disciples, you and I, should be praying about. Note first that Jesus taught the disciples when praying to say, Our Father. Yeah. Right. The message here is to approach God not as a distant being who has no relationship with us, but address Him as Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We understand Jesus calling God Father, but He teaches us to address God as Father also. That's because when we're saved, we are adopted by God into His family. Yeah. Yeah. How different is a prayer when you know that the God to whom you're praying has adopted you as his child. Mm -hmm. What a privilege to address God as Father. <clears throat> the saints of all understood. I can hear them now praying or singing a hymn saying, Father, I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whether shall I go? Mm -hmm. yeah. Father, Father. Father says, I'm not just speaking to a supreme being who is so high that I cannot reach him, who is so important that he doesn't have time for me, who's so preoccupied that he doesn't pay attention to me. I'm praying to my father. All right. My dad. All right. As the Jews said, my Abba. Then notice that Jesus teaches them to say not just Father, but our Father. Wow. <clears throat> Jesus had taught the disciples that he was God's only son, his begotten son. He taught that he and God, as Father and Son, had a special relationship. But here he says, when you address God, address him not just as my Father, but and not even as just your father, but address God as our father, as everybody's everybody. father. Amen. Amen. How significant one word makes. Not mine, but ours. One should recognize God as the father of our brothers and sisters in Jesus. Neither of us has a monopoly on God. He's my father, he's your father, he's everybody's father who is a believer. What a wonderful thing to look around the church and know that every Christian has the same heavenly father. How can one pray only for himself and not pray for his fellow Christians when God is father of us all? How it must have blessed the disciples when Jesus said, God is your father too. Address him as the father of all believers. When you pray, say our father. Mm -hmm. wow. You will agree with me, I am sure, that when we pray, it's only natural to seek God's intervention and help for our problems and concerns. But Jesus lays out a blueprint for praying that includes those petitions for our needs only after we have shown our Heavenly Father the highest of respect. Yeah. Jesus says when we begin to pray, the focus of the prayer should be on the one to whom we are praying. Amen. Our first priority in prayer should be on God, not on us. Well, so he says, before you start asking God to heal you or to get you out of trouble or provide for you, pray to acknowledge and reverence God. So this is what Jesus said. And there are three things you should have as your highest priority in prayer. First, to hallow God's name. That means to treat his name as holy, as sacred. If you respect God, 
you respect his name. Yeah. Jews traditionally have been so particularly respectful of God's name as sacred that they don't say his name. They will refer to God not by name but by my Lord. In Hebrew, the name of God consists of the four letters Y, H, W, H. Sometimes it's called the tetragrammaton. It's the Greek word for four letters. Isn't it ironic that the term four letter words in our society refers to curse words or vulgar words, words that Christians don't say? <laughs> Consider the looseness, the casualness, the disrespectfulness that some people display towards God's name. They say God's name to swear and curse and with profanity. They blaspheme God's name. God told Israel in Exodus 20 and 7, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Amen. For the Lord will not hold you guiltless who wow. takes his name wow. in vain. Wow. Then Jesus offers a second petition. He says, when you pray, ask God that his kingdom come to earth. That's right. right. Our desire is that we will move from earth to heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus says we should pray that the kingdom of God is established here on earth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't we want the world to become a better place? Oh, yeah. 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 It would be when God's kingdom comes and Satan is defeated and evil is eradicated. Yes, Wouldn't you like to live in a world where God and his goodness reign supreme with Satan, his prisoner in hell? Oh, yes, then pray, thy kingdom come. Yes. All right. Wouldn't you like a world without war? Yes. Pray, thy kingdom come. <coughs> Wouldn't you like to live in a world without crime and hate? Pray, thy kingdom come. We're on the cusp of an election of a new president of the United States, as well as other elected governmental officials. The campaigns are shameful. The rhetoric is despicable. What some candidates want to do if elected is horrifying. Mm -hmm. But regardless of who's elected to office, this world will not be the desirable place that you want it to be until thy kingdom comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said our priority should be to pray that our Father's will be done. Would you agree that most of the time the goal of your prayers is to get God to endorse you or fulfill your request for yourself and others? In other words, we go to God and say, Lord, this is what I want. Do it for me. Right now. I want healing. I want money. I need you to fix this for me. Yeah. I need and I want yes. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus says it's fine to express your needs and desires to God, but your priority should be that God manifest His will in your life yeah. and throughout the world. Our prayer should be that His will for the church is done. Yeah. Yeah. That God's will for the city, for the country, for the world is done. Yeah. 
we ought to pray and say, God, I want you to do in my life what you want my life to be. Yes, Stop treating Amen. God like a genie in a lamp who should give us three wishes. Yeah. Right. Say, Father, I pray that what you desire in me is accomplished. Yeah. I understand that your will for me may not be easy, but if it's your will, your will. Yeah. I know that that takes strong, mature, yeah. dedicated Christians yeah. to pray that, to mean that. Yeah. That's what Jesus says we should pray for. That God's will be done. Yeah. Yes. Go so right. Listen to what Jesus says to us in this text, in this next section of this model prayer. He's already told us to pray with God as our first priority. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Then he says, pray for yourself and your brethren. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at what he says we should ask for. First, give us our daily bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is perfectly fine to ask God to provide your needs for the day. Uh -huh. Food, clothing, shelter, etc. But listen to whom he says we should ask for. Not just for myself, well, but for all of us. All yeah. right. Give us, us. Yeah. our yeah. daily bread. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, ask that the needs for this day be yeah. met. Yeah. We're going to die. Yeah. You do not need God to provide today what you'll need next week. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes God feeds us yeah. with a small spoon. All right. Go ahead, man. So that we don't forget who feeds us. All right, man. Remember that He is an on time God. Yeah. Yeah. He can bless you one day. So pray, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. Come on. Then Jesus says, when you pray, ask God to forgive you for your debts. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, man. Debts here is not just what you owe financially. That's right. Man. All right, man. Debts also represent your sins yes. and your failures to do your Christian duty. Yeah. If we fail to carry out our duty, we've broken our covenant promises to God and our right. fellow Christians. All right. Come on, Pastor. Do you have any indebtedness for which you need forgiveness? Yes. If so, Jesus said you should pray and ask God to forgive you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. He says, ask God to forgive you as you forgive persons who have sin against you. Yeah. That's all right. Yes, God. Yeah, it is. You, you wouldn't want God to forgive you and you don't forgive someone else. All right. right. Go ahead. Yeah. That wouldn't be right. Go ahead. And yeah. you want to be right. Yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> not you preach. Right. Preach. The wording of this next petition lead us not into temptation needs our close attention. Well, the scripture teaches us that God does not tempt us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, if you read it, it almost sounds like we're asking God not to lead us to some temptation that uh -huh. might overtake us. But God does yeah. not tempt us. Yeah. He may test us, yeah. mm -hmm. but not tempt us. How about that? God's desire is that we be holy. Why would he tempt you to do something that is evil? All right. That doesn't make sense. I get it. Jesus is saying, ask God to lead you away from, from. temptation. Amen. Go ahead. Spare you from being tempted by evil, by that which is sinful. Keep you clear of what would tempt you and corrupt you. 
Don't let you see it. Don't let you hear it. Don't let you be confronted by it. Don't let you have to decide whether to engage in wrong or run from it. God, lead me away from temptation so I don't yield to it. All right. All right. Then Jesus says, when you pray, ask God to deliver you from evil. Sometimes God doesn't keep us from being exposed to something that's sinful. You ask, why doesn't he? Well, maybe because he's given us the ability to choose and resist sin. Have you ever said after realizing that you did something that you should not have done? Yeah, yeah. If I had only known, I wouldn't have. There you go. Oh, I wish I had. Satan is clever enough that he will lure you into trouble that you can't get yourself out of. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. That's what people who fish do. Yeah. <laughs> they put lures on the fishing hook at the end of the line. Right. The fish are attracted to the lure, not realizing that in the lure is a hook. Yeah. Right. yeah. And on the other end of the line is a person waiting to yeah. pull them in and have them for dinner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Satan poses. Pretty, attractive, yeah. enticing things or people in our past to lure us to yeah. sin. Yeah. To mm. do something that's not approved mm. by God. Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, people often fall for Satan's lures. Yeah. Yeah. After Adam and Eve. Yeah. Satan set them up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He convinced Eve that eating the forbidden fruit was good for them. Yeah. 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 It would make them as gods. Yeah. Yes, Lord. They fell for the Lord and they, even after God told Adam, not, yeah. he did it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And when that happens to us, that's when we need to pray, God, deliver us from evil. Yeah. Oh, All right. Thank you. But don't just pray that after you've eaten the fruit. Uh, <laughs> After you've engaged in the wrong, after you're trapped, after you're caught in the wrong, pray for deliverance when the temptation is presented. That's right. Pray for power to be delivered by resisting the temptation to sin. If nothing else, say, God, enable me to run away. Deliver me from this situation. Yes, sir. Give me strength to resist. As I close, notice that Jesus teaches us to close the prayer by acknowledging God again. Uh, that the kingdom is God's. Amen. That the power is God's. Yeah. Amen. That the glory is His. Yeah. Yes, sir. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are God's, not ours. All right. I like that, Yeah. Do you know why? Yes. I'm sure you do. Well. It is because God is supreme. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're just a creature which God made. That's right. Yeah. Wild. You didn't create the heavens and the earth. God did. Yeah. Right. Oh, God. That's why all power, all honor, and glory are here. Yeah. 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 You didn't save the world. God did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You didn't give your child the same sinful humanity. God did. Yeah. You didn't suffer like Jesus. You didn't die on the cross. You didn't get up from the grave one Sunday morning, but Jesus did. Yeah. That's why the glory, the honor, the praise belongs to him. Yeah. That's why Jesus closes the model prayer by saying forever, forever. and amen. Yeah. amen. Forever is how long God will reign victorious. Yeah. All right. Forever is how long he'll reign supreme. Yeah. Yeah. Forever is how long we'll worship him. Yeah. Forever is how long we'll rejoice in his presence. Yeah. Forever is how long we'll sing his praise. Yeah. Forever. Ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. Non-stop. Yeah. Never ending. Yeah. Joy. Yeah. And hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And ever. Yeah. And ever. Yeah. And then he closes with 
with one last word. Amen. 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 That means so let it be. Amen means it's final. Yeah. Amen means that's the end of it. Yeah. Amen means the case is closed. Yeah. Amen means this is the yeah. conclusion. Yeah. The verdict is in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The word won't change. Amen yeah. is the everlasting word. Yeah. That's no more discussion. That's final. Amen. God has spoken. That's the way it is. Amen. Because the Lord said so. Amen. Amen. And amen. God said it. That's it. People used to say sometimes, God said it. And I believe it. Amen.
boy Jesus went to Calvary. He called his disciples together and they met in another room.
all we come now to say just thank you. Thank you for our covenant. Thank you for our words and ways of life that we can live righteously before you. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the Lord's prayer. We thank you, Lord, for being with us every day, every hour, every minute, guiding us, holding our hand, and loving us. And now, Lord, as we come together, to represent you and all that you stand for in your goodness and your righteousness. We ask that you be with us, Lord. Go with us and stay with us. Speak to our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us eat and drink together.
disciples did as we've done today. The scripture says they sung a hymn and they went out. Would you please stand and sing with the choir? Please don't leave until after this hymn is sung. 